going to get spooled here. You can see. That's the lure of the dip. That is, it's big and it's running. Oh, a lot. Oh, geez. Didn't expect that. Oh, I might have to go chase this thing. Yep, that is, I mean, that's a big mackerel. Oh, did not expect this. Okay, that is still going. Oh, oh I'm gonna get spooled here if I'm not careful. Geez. Excuse my language. Oh. 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 That is a big fish. I did not bargain for that. I need to get back to the braid. I've got 30 pound mono underneath 20 pound braid. I need to make up some ground. That fish is out about, oh, I don't know, 250 meters. Oh, and he snapped off. Something happened there, he's gone. Oh, that was epic. Something happened. Oh, he's gone. 150 meters line still out. Oh, man. Oh, and there it is. Snapped off. That's very disappointing. I've got a line back at least. That was a monster fish. So let's start with the introduction. <laughs> I just got blown away by that fish. I'm at the Outer Islands of the Whitsundays. My mission tonight, my adventure, is to catch squid and cook them up in the morning. The recipe I've got in mind is squid ink pasta made from scratch. So I've got to catch the squid, there'll be squid in it, and I'll use the ink to make the pasta black. Never done this before, never even tried black pasta before, or squid ink pasta. So I'll give it a shot, I'm game. So on this trip, I'm a solo traveler. I'll explain more about that later on. We've got about half an hour before the sun goes down and then I'll put the light out. And then I reckon we'll be in for some squid. <laughs> Andy's fishing and wild cook. So guys, the sun's about to set. The tuna have stopped jumping. And I'm just gonna have a little chill out on my little drifter chair. So I'm yeah, here nice and comfortable here. Watch the sunset and uh, yeah, have a little bit of chicken in a box. <laughs> and a bunch of you have asked me on my hiking videos, do I ever see ghosts? Tonight, I have a ghost story. <laughs> it's um, true, it happened to me, but yeah, you'll have to wait. Anyway, I'm going to eat the chicken. This is the squid light I'm using. It's basically four 10 watt, that's a 10 watt LED there, on a hollow piece of aluminium with a bunch of cord and just a little cigarette lighter socket thing there. So you need the hollow aluminium to cool those LEDs down. Cover the whole thing in silicon just to keep it waterproof. I'll just show you it turned on. There you go. So I use blue light because blue travels further through the water. Within 10 seconds of turning the light on, we've got some little fish here. That's very cool. While I wait for it to get really dark, I'm just going to rig up my squid jig. The, probably the most important thing, if you see squids and they don't eat your squid jig or bait or whatever you've got on, is the thickness of your leader. I'm using, I think it's 8 pound fluorocarbon. It's really quite thin. I'll show you. Look at that. It's uh, yeah, really thin. 
this is the, the 20, and that's the 8. You almost, yeah, can't see one. This is the squid jig I'll be using. It's quite small. It's, um, yeah, seen a bit of action. While we wait for the squids to turn up, let's play a little game. Let's see if I can catch one of these little fish by hand. Oh, that almost got him. Here's one. Oh, it's not going to be that easy. I use two hands. Let's see. Oh, almost had him. Got him. <laughs> this is what we call a hardy head. Hang on. There he is. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, cute little fish. Um, and this is what the squid will come, come in for when they turn up. They won't turn up until it's really dark and the light's been out for a while. Let's let this guy go. Hey, there you go. Check out the sounder. All that stuff there on the, the left side of the side scan. That's um, either squid or fish. Yep, I've got one. Woo! First squid of the night. Check this one out, guys. That's my first squid. Hoo -hoo -hoo, he's a nice one. Hey, okay, hopefully we get a few more of these things. They are, uh, they're tasty, these ones. It's uh, called an arrow squid. Um, also called flying squid in some places. There's the squid jig that got him. Let's, um, yeah, put him in the esky and get a couple more. There we go, I've got another squid. It's taken a whole nother hour to get the second squid. Oh, have a look at this guy. Check out the dots on his body. They're pretty cool. Oh, there's another one. Oh, yep, another one's just turned up. Like so the squids aren't coming to the top at the moment. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the squid jig drop down about three meters. You can see we're in 11 meters of water. And that's a squid, that's a squid, that's a squid. All those green marks are squid. Oh, I've got him, I've got him. Let's get him in. Ooh, only just got him by the tentacle. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's only just hooked by that little tentacle on, on his... Oh, wow. Let's have a good look at him. Check that out for a squid. Eh? Well, lucky to get him, I think. There we go. Look at him. Ooh. On this squid here, you can see that black ink. He's it's all over his tentacles. Would you eat that? I'm, I'm not sure. I've, I've heard it's good. Um, they actually use it as a defense mechanism. In the morning, we'll cook this guy up and we'll try this black ink. Look at it. So it's after midnight. I'm giving up on the squid fishing. The good news is I got, I think I got three. So that's enough to make uh, ink, squid ink pasta tomorrow. The bad news is my underwater camera leaked, so that could cost me $1,200. Anyway, that's the price of making videos in salt water. Um, I've pulled up into this little bay. I think it's going to look really pretty in the morning. Um, haven't, well, it's, it's dark as, so I, I can't see it. I've, I've made sure I've got over two meters of water under me, and the tide's dropping, I think, 1.6, 1.7. We'll have a look over the side in the morning, because it's going to be pretty shallow, and I reckon pretty clear as well. It's quite late, and it's time to go to bed. But, as I promised, tonight's story is a ghost story. Quite often when I go into the bush and make a video, I get people asking me, do I ever see ghosts? Am I scared of ghosts? So here's my ghost story. About 20 years ago, I was caretaking an old Queenslander. They're big wooden houses, and most of them were probably built 80 to 100 years ago, and this one was, was also quite old. I was there by myself. It was probably 10.30 at night. As I said, it was about 30 years ago. And I just had a shower. I walked out of the shower. I was in the middle of the living room. And I distinctly heard a door handle. When you open a door handle, they creak. They go, Ee! and I heard that behind me. And I turned around, and there was nothing there. The back door was closed. 
the shower door that I just come through was open, just how I left it. I looked all around, I couldn't see anything. I was a little bit freaked out. <laughs> Actually, probably a lot freaked out. What do you think happened? I'll give you five seconds. Everybody, say your answer right now. Okay. So what actually happened, I, I eventually figured it out. It, it, it took me probably a good 10 minutes. Maybe maybe 15. I, it was that long ago, I don't remember. But I went, I walked back into the bathroom and I saw this towel lying on the floor. And I went, that wasn't there before. I wonder who put it there. And then I realised... I'd put the towel on the edge of the corner, the corner, the top top corner of the of the shower door, and what had happened was the towel slid down. In that moment that I walked past the door, I didn't touch it. The towel slid down, pulled the handle, made the noise, and quietly went onto the floor. And I didn't notice that. I just heard that that door handle. Anyway, that's, that's the closest thing I've got to a ghost story. The thing is, most people fear fear itself. If you don't harm anybody, most people don't want to harm you. And as for ghosts, well, I don't know who knocked the towel off the door. It wasn't me. Probably wasn't a ghost though. Anyway, that's tonight's story, and I'll see you in the morning. Okay guys, it's time for bed. Hopefully it doesn't rain tonight. There's a couple of clouds over there that don't look real good, but fingers crossed, I'll be alright. I do have the tent with me, but I'm not going to set it up. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. everyone that wasn't a bad night's sleep at all the, um, the wind sort of settled down I don't know maybe one or two in the morning the, uh, the rain didn't come which is good it's a uh, nice temperature the only problem was this morning probably half an hour ago maybe an hour no probably half an hour ago a few sand flies showed up that's because it's low tide and there was no wind, but I just stuck my head under here, like this. And, yeah, they weren't too big a problem. It's about half an hour before sunrise. And uh, I think we should have a look over the side, because it should be quite shallow. It's, I can actually hear tuna splashing around out in the bay already. So that's pretty cool. Nice and early. This is what's over the side. It's, um, I guess like a rubbly sort of bottom with uh, a little bit of sea. Let's have a look. This is the bay we're in at the moment. There's the, the island. It's um, a little, little tiny bit of wind around, not, not too bad. And the bed I was going to show you, I've got just a, a really old pillow. You don't want to take a good pillow out in the boat. Um, nice sleeping bag. This one's nice and thick has a zip both sides so I can open up either end and because I'm quite tall it's actually got this this pocket down here which I put my feet in and I can have my feet sticking out which I did last night I get a bit hot if my feet are covered all night and then under here we've got these this is like a, a foam probably two inch foam mattress and just an inflatable mattress as well. The sleeping bag's thick enough to keep the dew off me so without rain all you need is a sleeping bag and a bit of foam under you. Start my day with a little cocoa, or in my case, a liter of cocoa. You might be able to see the the rainbow behind me. It's um, just on that ridge there, just above the ridge, and the sun is just touching that ridge. 
Cheers, everybody. There's been quite a few questions about where's Nerida, why did you break up, all that sort of stuff. We're not broken up. Um, she has a job, she's got to work. This is my work. I, um, I often spend two whole days out here and then two days editing. So when I have time with her, it's, it's private time, it's fun time, it's our time. You will see her again. We'll, we'll definitely sail on the boat again. Uh, the thing was though, with, with the sailing episodes, they didn't get the response that I thought. And I've got to stick with making videos that work for me, that, that you guys want to see, that most of you want to see. I know there's a lot of you that do like the, the sailing videos, but if there's no income for me, I can't keep making them. So I have to find what you guys like. Yeah, we're still together. You'll see her again. But at the moment, I'm concentrating on growing the channel and making it viable for me. It's just after six in the morning and it's a little early to cook pasta for me. So I'll have a little fish around the bay here, see what I can catch, won't be too long. And then maybe around eight or something like that, we'll um, yeah, cook up some yummy squid ink pasta. I haven't heard the tuna splashing for a while, so I've rigged up a weedless soft plastic and we'll fish around the uh, coral edge here. It's about five meters deep here and probably one meter deep. Just, it, it sort of contours all, all through here. The retrieve I'm using is a twitch, twitch, wine, twitch, twitch, wine. Yep. <sighs> Got him that time, yes. Oh, oh, it's flipping around a lot, so maybe a tusk fish. I don't think it's a sweet lip. It's not strong enough. Oh, hang on, it's red. It's red. What have we got? It is a sweet lip. Yes, a little red throat. Oh, they have this amazing red. I'll have to hold him up in the sun for you. Look at that. Amazing red, and they've got a really nice red throat. And actually, have a look at the the blue on his pectoral fin there. Oh, I'll show you his mouth before we let him go. Look at that, really bright red. That's why they call a red throat, red throat emperor, or sort of a sweet lip as well. Hey, okay, off you go. Beautiful fish. He's good. Okay, I've got the big outfit. Let's see if I can work up an appetite on a big GT tuna. Oh, mackerel. Check this out, we're in with a shot. Big fish, big fish, big fish. Bait school. That's on. So I'm just casting it out a little bit. Letting it sink all the way to the bottom. And then, rip wine, rip wine. Oh, yep, got him. Oh, that's a fish, that's a good fish. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 it's got a weird action on it. Oh, there it is, I can saw it. Bit of colour. Oh, it could be a big mackerel even. It's big, whatever it is. Oh, it's a big Spanish, I think. There he goes. <laughs> big Spanish mackerel. Oh. Yeah, there it is, big Spanish. Oh, oh back of the boat, back of the boat. Oh. Okay, let's get this guy in. Woo, he's a good fish. Oh. I don't want to kill, oh, they got me. I don't want to kill a fish this size. I just want to get the hooks out and let him go. Oh. Oh. Uh, there he is. Oh. oh, look at the size of that thing. Holy cow. He just smashed my jig into the deck. Oh, I'm just going to get one quick glamour shot and then we'll chuck him over. Check out the size of that mackerel. That is a monster. Oh. I'm going to have to let him go, because otherwise he won't survive. Okay, I'll see you later, fish. Woo! <laughs>
Wow, that was fun. That's the jig that did it. And when he was just thrashing around, he managed to drive this into the deck. Look at this. That's what he did, he smashed it right into there. Put a hole in my deck. Wow. Woo. <laughs> oh, that was cool. I see some tuna over here. I reckon one more fish and then I'll eat something. I just want to stretch my arms a bit more. That guy didn't actually run that fast. So yeah, I think mackerel are actually quite underrated. Um, for sports fish, they, they can go fast, but they don't fight real hard. Anyway, let's chase these tuna. Okay, here's the tuna from yesterday. Let's see if we can get in there. Oh. Should be about right. Oh, got him. Oh, I had him. That was fish. Oh. I can see them in the water. That cast is right where they are. Yep, on, on. That didn't take long at all. We have, pretty sure it's a tuna. They're still feeding all around the boat. There he is, all oh, right under the surface. I really hope this is a bluefin tuna, not a mac tuna. It's the back of the boat. Oh. Oh, it's a bluefin. Ooh, I want to get this guy in. Yes. Oh, right, back of the boat again. Oh, I just touched the back of the boat. That's bad. You don't want to touch the boat. Not with braid. Oh, he's going straight down. Oh, I hope he doesn't get sharked. That's where they get sharked. I'm going to do this. The thing I hooked yesterday, it was a lot, lot bigger than this. This is a nice bluefin tuna. And that other thing, it took 200 meters of line. This thing hasn't gone past, oh, probably 60 or 70. This is a workout. This is what I asked for. Stretching my arms. Oh, I'm pumping wine. That's all I can do is pump and wine. Oh, one arm gets tired, you switch to the other arm for a little bit. Oh, he's fighting for his life. It's just my arms are getting a bit sore. Come on, buddy. I don't want you to be shark food. Oh, I did see him come after, like I actually saw him eat, eat the lure. Okay, he's coming up now. Oh, still a fair bit of line. Just come up to the surface, there he is, he's coming right at us. Let's see if we can net him. Oh, this is a good fish. Got him. Oh, bluefin tuna. Oh, oh, cool. Look at him. Oh, oh, that was a good 15 minute fight. Oh, stop it, fella, stop it. Oh, I am taking you home. Look at the colors on here. Oh, let's get that hook out. They are a special fish. Oh, sashimi, hey? Oh, beautiful. That's the lure that did it, little chrome slice. I rigged it backwards, but that doesn't matter. They don't care. Quick glamour shot of Mr. Tuna. Hopefully he's all in the picture. <laughs> they're cool and they're tasty. You've seen me throw many Mac tuna back. Not these guys. These guys are delicious. Ooh. I'm going to cut his throat because I'm taking him home. There we go. They are excellent eating the bluefin tuna. How's that? Fourth or fifth cast and a bluefin tuna. I'm ready for breakfast now. Woo! <laughs> oh, that is cool. Here we are, 
one coconut beach, or one coconut tree beach. Beautiful looking white sand. We'll set up somewhere up there and cook the pasta. <laughs> I like little beaches like this. And there's our friend, little black tip shark. That's probably just over a foot deep. He's cruising around looking for some food. Anyway, he's probably only just oh, probably three foot long, if that. Cool. Very clear water here. Very, very clear water. Cool little buddy. How do you guys like my beach kitchen? It's pretty special, isn't it? It's a uh, yeah, nice little spot. I reckon I might come here again. Anyway, the first thing we are to do is get our squid. And what I normally do is wash them and get the ink off them. But I want to keep the ink. And if you can catch squid, you can make squid ink pasta pretty easy. I'll show you how. We'll start with the biggest squid. That may, may be enough for us. We'll have a look. And the cool thing with squid that haven't been dead long is their chromatophores are still active. They're, they're changing shape and colour. Well, actually, really just size. Because each one's a different colour. To dissect this squid, I'll cut off his tentacles just below the eyes. And if you grab them, you can squeeze out the beak. You don't want to eat the beak. You probably can. That's his beak. Let the birds have that. And then the next thing, I'm going to slice off his wings. Now normally what I do is I just rip his head out with all the insides, but I don't want to burst the ink sac. So I'm just going to cut along his stomach, nice and shallow, and open him up like that. Parts of a squid. There is his stomach, that sort of bit with all little fish eyes and bones in it. This, I believe, is part of the reproductive organ. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. And then the thing, the one, the, the bit we're after is the ink sac, which is right here. It's the silver bit. Let's see if we can get that out without too much mess. And there we have it. There's one ink sac. Put that in our little bowl and save that for later. Now, the rest of this we will just pull out as we do normally. That's cleaning the squid. There we go. Fish can have that. Give that a little scrape with the knife. Get the fingernail underneath his backbone. There you go. It looks like a little quill, plastic quill. The last preparation on the skid is we'll just cut him into strips and then into rectangles or squares, whatever you prefer. These flaps will cut in half and we'll make the tentacles a little shorter as well. There we go. And there we have the second squid. Now, there's no need to wash any of this because we're eating the ink anyway. I'm going to use just plain flour for this, and I hope I brought enough. This is what I had in the, the cupboard at home. So we'll see how much is there. I'm hoping for about 200, 250 mil, just under 250. I'm going to put that into a big bowl, make a bit of a well in the middle, and crack in two small eggs. So this will be an egg pasta, and now we're going to add just the insides of the ink sacs. Let's see if we can get that out without making too much of a mess. I think if I give it a little cut, there we go, look at that. Woo! <laughs> it's like, like paint, and a little of this stuff goes a long way. When I've cleaned squid in the past in the sink at home, a few drops like that will colour... 20 30 litres of water and it just goes jet black. You can see it on the end of the knife there. It's just, yeah, it's really dark. Just going to use a little stick and start mixing that around. And you can tell straight away, just those few little drops are just going to make this jet black. I have made pasta quite a few times, and what you do is you just work it around in the middle and work the flour into 
the wet bit in the, in the center there. As you can tell, you probably want to wear gloves when you're doing this. I didn't bring any. Anyway, once it gets a bit of a ball happening, I'm going to empty it out on my cutting board and knead it by hand. And that feels like about ready. Apparently if you push it in and it bounces back, that's the consistency you want. So I'm lucky, or I'm glad, that I had a little bit of corn flour in my drifter bag in one of these containers, otherwise I'd be in a little bit of trouble. Anyway, that's got to rest for half an hour now, so what we'll do is we'll prepare the other ingredients and then that'll be ready to cook with. Squid ink is one of those things that I thought I would probably never eat, but after you try a few different things and they taste all right, you give things a go. It doesn't really smell like anything except for, yeah, pasta dough. Hopefully it tastes a little different. It actually looks like a big black truffle. <laughs> so I've got some really nice ingredients here. We'll start by chopping a spring onion. Doesn't have to be too fine. We'll dice two cloves of garlic and also dice half a dozen basil leaves as well. And just be sure to put the basil in a different container from the garlic and onions. And then we'll just rough chop a bunch of little baby Roma tomatoes. They go in with the basil. And I've got some parmesan, which I'm just going to grate into the tomato and basil. A little bit of that. Maybe two tablespoons? Yeah, two tablespoons. Let's go with that. The pasta is now rested and a little bit cool. So we get a dusting of flour. I'm going to fold the pasta dough three times and then we'll roll it out normally I'd say you want to roll it so thin that you could almost see through it but with the squid ink that's not going to be possible what we're going to do is just cut it into long skinny pasta strips. You want a really sharp knife for this, this is ideal. Now the pasta's cut, we just chuck it into our little bowl. We're going to need the saucepan and a pot. This stuff really stacks amazingly well. And there's the handle for the saucepan. Look at that. Kitchen is versatile. There's our pasta. It might not be the neatest pasta, but it's squid ink pasta made by hand on a beach. Very cool. The rest of this cooking is going to be really fast. The pasta will take maybe two, three, four minutes. The other stuff, probably about the same. Now it's tempting to use salt water to cook the pasta, but I've cooked rice in salt water before and it tastes horrible. There's a lot more minerals in salt water than sodium chloride. So that's why it tastes bad. Anyway, I'm gonna use water with salt added. What I have in this little red container is olives and sun-dried tomatoes with a bit of oil. So we use that oil to cook with. Straight away, we'll throw in the onions and garlic. Now I've got that fairly high and we want to keep this moving. I'll tell you why in a second. We'll add a little bit more oil. Those onions and garlic have been going for a little while but what we want is that pan to be exceptionally hot and that is actually exceptionally hot. Where's the squid? Dump the squid in now. You want to cook squid on a really hot pan. You might have noticed the tide's actually coming up pretty fast. So we're going to cook this in the nick of time. I'm actually going to taste a bit of raw pasta. If anything, it tastes like raw pasta and earthy and a tiny little bit bitter. Mmm, 
Mmm, I'm tasting the bit of right in the back of my tongue. I've turned the heat off on the squid and we're just going to dump the olives and sun-dried tomatoes in there. They'll heat through slowly. There we go, perfect. Give that a stir quickly. We don't want it all to stick together. There we go, look at that. Ooh, black pasta. That's definitely a first for me. Let's see if that pasta's ready. It's, um, it's looking all flexible. So I'm going to have a proper taste of the pasta. Just on its own. I probably made it a little thick. It's probably twice as thick as what it should be. You can taste the slightest hint of ocean there. Hmm. And not, not really bitter. Maybe just a tiny hint. Drain the pasta. I think because I use corn flour, the texture's not flat. It's um, yeah, it's got a bit of a texture to it, which is fine. It means it'll suck up the sauce a bit better. Okay, we'll get out a bowl, nice big one. There we go, and serve him up. Oh, this is quite a nice big meal. Look at that. Put the squid, olives, and tomato on there. Beautiful. Get all that oil on there. And then, the piste resistance. How could this not taste nice? <laughs> We've got the parmesan, tomato, and basil. Look at that for a dish. That looks superb. Oh, and I am hungry. I am really hungry. Say, this is gonna be delicious. It just has that look about it. Let's try just a piece of squid. A little bit of onion garlic flavour on there. Uh, what the heck, let's just dive in. <laughs> we got some cheese, we got some squid, we got some pasta. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't know when it was that I said that I've created my best dish. This is my best dish. Mm. Olive, tomato, a bit of pasta. Oop. Come here, olive. Mm. And sun dried tomato. And check out, check out this. It doesn't get any better than this. All the ingredients just, just work well together. Oh, a bit of basil here as well. Mm. I wonder what that, that fresh taste is. And um, Throwing the tomatoes with the basil in right at the end, they're not cooked. They're just like a fresh pick-me-up, I guess. Pasta can be a bit stodgy, but yeah, that fresh basil and tomato mm, just makes it light. And then you got this kind of weird looking pasta. <laughs> it tastes great. Mm. I think next time I'll try more squid ink. I'm not really getting too much ocean flavour, especially with all these other flavours together. But, I'll tell you what, it was worth waiting for and cooking up. Mm. So delicious. Wow. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.